going to tell us? Come on, sir. We're on. We're live. Good evening and welcome to the March meeting of the Hampton Beach Village District. Our esteemed uh, chairman is not with us tonight, so I will do my best. Please stand. Oh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <laughs> We have a very light schedule this evening. You'll be happy to hear. <laughs> Helen has a lot of questions, though. Who does? Helen. I think you need to leave now, Ellen. <laughs> I move to adjourn. Um, I think for, <laughs> I move to adjourn. Actually, it's an undebatable motion. Uh, uh, I think. Get a second. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> um, uh, Richard, you want to go? Well. Rich Brenier on the voting. Coming up the end of the month. What day is it? It's on you. Did you get an itinerary, uh, an agenda? I do. Read the bottom. Oh, that big print for you. <laughs> okay, I am Richard Renier, the moderator for our annual Hampton Beach Village District meeting, which will occur on March 25th. The Hampton Beach Village District will conduct its annual meeting on Friday, March 25th at the Brown Ave Fire Station located at 119 Brown Ave. Hampton Beach registration and voting for district offices from 1 to 7 p.m. and then the deliberative session and voting of the warrant articles including the 2016 budget to follow. Uh, the supervisors of the checklist will be meeting on March 12th from 12 noon to 1 p.m. For anybody who is not listed now on the uh, uh, the uh, checklist, yeah, at that time you can uh, register to vote, or you can register to vote during the whole time from 1 to 7. Dick, what was that, March 12th what? March 12th from 12 noon to 1 p.m. right here at the fire station. Okay. Supervises the checklist. In this, in this room? Uh, yes, they'll probably be right up here. Right? Uh, and to register to vote... You must be a resident of the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, even though you may have be registered in town, we are kind of a separate entity, so you have to register here in the Village District if you choose to vote. And you have to have to provide a photo ID uh, to ensure that you are a resident of the district. A photo ID can be a, a acceptable a driver's license a non-driver ID that the New Hampshire uh, Motor Vehicle uh, uh, Agency supplies, a uh, Armed Forces ID, a passport, or any other photo that is deemed appropriate <coughs> as uh, indicated by the supervisors of the checklist. In addition, this year, uh, if you uh, do not have a photo ID, you will have to uh, sign a, an affidavit and be photographed. So that is just one addition to the, uh, to the changes. Uh, let's see, I don't think there's anything else. Again, the supervisors will be here on March 12th. And on the 25th, the annual election will take place from 1 to 7 p.m. You will be electing a commissioner for three years, a moderator for one year, clerk for one year, treasurer for one year, supervisor of the checklist for three years, and actually the other dates are already passed. But uh, that's the basically what, I'm to, what we have now. March 25th for the annual meeting, and if you are not registered, March 12th to register to vote here at the, uh, at the fire station. Any questions? I just want I yes. wanted to make a comment, if I may. I, we've met uh, some new people that have come to our meetings that have moved into condos and, and <coughs> very lovely people. I hope they come to register if they haven't already. I hope they come down um, anytime before 7 o'clock on March oh, yes. 25th to, to register because I know um, some of you came to the meetings and please come and register as a member of the, because it's separate, as you said, right. as a member of the Hampton Beach Village District. Right. <clears throat> yes, sir. Richard, will, um, with, with, on that note, uh, we'll be putting out the sign 
at the end of round ads? Definitely, yes. Is there will. A week ahead of time? Or <coughs> no, actually, I usually just put it out the day before that, well, because it disappears. Oh, okay. I'm afraid it will disappear. Okay. But there will be a signed poster here right at the corner to notify anybody passing by that, yes, I've, our meeting is going to take place. Okay, maybe we can get the paper to pick up on that meeting. Oh, Max is here. <laughs> well, actually, it's going to be, uh, it has been, it was published on March 4th, a, not a legal notice, and it will be in the Hampton, uh, the Hampton Union again uh, next Friday. So we're going to give as much publicity as we can to let people know that the meeting is taking place. Great. Thank you. Yes. Do you know, do you know Dick, um, who the candidates are for the positions? As far as I know, uh, all uh, positions have unopposed. <clears throat> Uh, I've, I talked to Jenna Clark, who is our, our clerk, and as of the last time I Janet spoke, Allard. What's that? Janet Allard. Janet Allard. Right, <coughs> that uh, there is no uh, candidates have submitted, or anyone has submitted uh, application for uh, for the offices. Except the three that are incumbents. And, uh, except the incumbents, right. Okay. Okay, there, is there any other old business? Oh, businessmen. Oh, okay. Uh, Rich's presentation is a perfect segue. Yesterday, the town voted for a state representative, a uh, member of the board of selectmen, and the town and school budgets. We are voting on the 25th separately for our Warren articles and our budget. There was one Warren article the DPW presented for $2 million, which apparently failed by one vote, pending a recount. That tells us all, all we need to know about the necessity of voting. One more vote could have changed that article, assuming the recount is the same as the original count. The other thing I would like to say, our meeting and our political structure is different than the town. The town is what they call an SB2 structure. We are an open meeting structure. New England basically originated under the open town meeting concept politically. What is the difference between the two structures? Basically, you have to come and attend our meeting to vote. And nobody votes before the presentation on the budget and the articles is presented. So everybody who chooses to vote, who is in that room, is pretty well informed about the issues. I, and uh, my bias, I guess, is a little bit more to an open town meeting, but certainly there are arguments to the contrary. So finally, I just encourage everyone to come. And Bob, uh, could you or Maureen mention that the warrants, uh, everything's been posted legally? Mm -hmm. You They've been posted that? at the up, Uptown, at the Town Hall, at uh, Beezy's um, Convenience store, store, yeah, at the Lighthouse Market. Yes, and John Kane, you put them online, so they're, online, so they're so. online as well for people if they want to, you know, take a look at them ahead of time, okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other old business? Mm -hmm. Did you want to say anything? No? Anyone? No. How about new business? We will move on. I, I would ask, this is kind of new and old. They've done it before, but asking them to do it again makes it new. I would ask John and Glenn if they could perhaps in the next month submit an up-to-date uh, job description like you had done a few years ago just to keep it current over time, contacts, things change. And it's, and it's something we'd like to just have on file. Further on to new business, after the March general meeting, at our April monthly meeting, we are going to have a lot of guests. The chairman of the planning board and the town planner are going to come and explain what a planning board does and what its duties are. The town planner, the uh, Hampton uh, coordinator for the I'm getting a brain cramp for the okay. Conservation Commission and Rockingham Planning Representative who will be here to give us a status update on entry into the community rating system under the flood insurance. 
program. So we're going to have a lot of people, and we hope you come, because I think it's good to know how these boards and how these organizations function and what they look for, particularly with all the growth that's going on down here at the beach. Are you done? I'm done. Okay. Um, I think um, also we, we're, we're looking into some new events, perhaps, in the, in the early summer. No, this was in July, I think, July. for that age range between 9 and uh, 14, but actually, yeah, that's about it, right? Nine yeah. and we're, we're trying to do something on the beach, and we're going to meet with the state tomorrow afternoon. And we're probably going to have, the sand sculptures will be up. They will be up until the, hopefully, the plan is to have them up until the... Fourth of July. Well, it was going to be the fifth, right? Take them down. The the we, we take a, we advertise it, and, and the reason if we do it this way, if we take them down on the fifth, and I say the fifth, yeah. people will be there at ten o'clock screaming that. And I, they'll be all set because they're staying up until the sixth. <laughs> Okay, we're going to fine. keep. I'm yeah. just telling. That was my point. Yeah. We're going to. We go, oh, okay. We're going to um, keep the sand sculptures up, mm -hmm. and then have these events near there or in the fenced area for the kids for free, and um, it'll keep them up for a day. And then on the sixth, we'll have everything come down. Is that right? Yeah. Typically, just to let you know how it works, um, once they're done, they pull that fence in. Usually it's way out there, so they have. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how we're having a meeting yes. about that. I'd okay. like to keep that out. Okay, you're gonna have to tell. Yeah, we're well, gonna. That's why I'm meeting with Brian Wilson tomorrow, Excellent. and hopefully keep that because I'd like to put it if I could in, in that enclosed area, mm -hmm. so that anybody that comes in, and these people have their own liability as well, the people that we're thinking of having, so we don't have to worry too much about anybody doing anything. So that'll be something new. Anything else? Do we have anything else new coming on the horizon? No. No, not at this time. Okay. Well, actually, we should congratulate Brian Lappin. On, yes, on his, congratulations, uh, election Brian. Yesterday. It was a squeaker. <laughs> it, was, it, it was hotly contested. Yeah. No, well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Well, you, Thanks. you top. Well, I'll do whatever I can. You people. I know, and we appreciate that, too. Thank you. You must realize we're on television. <laughs> <laughs> we have that recorded now. Everybody knows. I was just copying. Sorry. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Anything else? No, I anyone? don't. Anyone? Anyone? Nothing from you over there? How are the bands? Get up and tell me how the bands are doing. <laughs> Talk about the bands. Who's coming? Who's? Oh, and the prom. Forgot about the prom. You have a lot of stories. Tell the stories. I always have a few stories to tell. I know tell, you do, but, but I want you to tell the story. My name is Glenn French, and I'm the entertainment coordinator for the Hampton Beach Village District and the uh, Seashell Stage. Um, we are in the process of scheduling the entertainment for this summer, and it's quite far along at this particular point. Nothing final, of course, until the annual meeting. Uh, a couple of the events that we've talked about is trying to boost that week after the 4th of July, and so we've had several discussions uh, with area schools with their input from from Marston and from Sacred Heart and from what the junior high school um, Hampton Academy <coughs> discussing what they would like to see on the beach for them as we discuss tween fest or tween week exactly how that evolves and and all of the events uh, they're still kind of up in the air but essentially, it, it's going to be some physically active events, uh, kind of mimicking the Olympics, but maybe not the Olympics. It would be uh, what we talked about. Help me out. I can't remember all of the events we talked about. But there that were, bungee business. Yeah. And I forget what those Yeah, the bungee are jumps and the, and, the, and the bubble ball. ball. Yeah. And, and several we're events. In we got, we're doing this in conjunction with the Hampton Rec with Diana Martin. We've had meetings with Diana as well, and she's helping us out. Uh, it, it was interesting to have a meeting with all the with children of that age group, that 11 to 14 or 9 to 14 age group, and they all had something to say. They all had interesting yeah. ideas. So we're trying to merge all of that interest into the program. Um, in addition, um, traditionally, this music program always started on 
uh, the last week of June and maybe even Fourth of July weekend, and we backed it up to Memorial Day weekend, and now we're starting on the first Saturday in May. We'll have over 100 concerts this year. Um, that's a fairly substantial increase from what we have been doing, but it seems to work. I think the early seasons, depending on the weather, I can't say whether there'll be a huge crowd there, but uh, Commissioner Ladd has made me understand that there are two audiences here. There are those that are recreating and vacationing here, and also those that live here, own apartments and condos, mm -hmm. and uh, are there to participate in the event to what extent it is. So we're, all of these programs, again, are evolving, but that's the program so far. Um, other things, Children's Week, of course, has become a tradition. It was two days, then it went to three days, and now a full week. Uh, we pray for good weather, uh, as always. And the Hampton Talent Competition, which is the last weekend in August, um, that we've already had our first application and our first submission. Uh, we're working to boost the interest in that. Uh, I think last year's talent competition was uh, very well received and the, the participation has been, I'm stunned at the quality of talent from these amateurs. It, it really is uh, pretty good. So we are all pretty worn out by the end of the summer. But uh, at any rate, does that cover? And the prom? Oh, oh, open up to the high school. The, the most important part, yeah. <laughs> uh, the junior prom, uh, Grand March, will be on May 21st. And uh, the Village District is supporting that event. It's their event. We are there to help them do a better job. And we've got shared some ideas with them. And uh, uh, they seem interested in our support. I dare I say even excited. The fact they that were we lovely. Were there. They were just so yeah. enthusiastic. And so we're developing that. There will be entertainment that night. The Continentals will be on stage. I don't know where we're going to put them uh, because the stage is going to be pretty much uh, full with the things that the implements and the decorations but uh, uh, it's it's coming together we're, th we're thinking about having like a little arch for them to proceed through uh, and uh, we'll have them enter from the back of the stage if that's possible and pipe and drape up around to okay. decorate it a little bit and make it a little more special for them so it's a big deal and it's a big deal for them and I think it warrants our support. So, I, I would just have a couple of comments. One, we have not yet met, met with the junior high. We met with Marston and Sacred Heart. We met with two of the three schools. I can't remember. We've had okay. so many meetings. Like and, this. and more importantly, we're we've reached out to the town through Glenn, and the town is going to do its what's become an annual concert of the high school band and singers and that will be in early June we've had conversations with them and they may do a second performance in October and they may provide a choral group to do some seasonal singing on fireworks New Year's Eve show so my impression was that October was could be not they're not sure about yeah. that but the fire with the uh, New Year's Eve experience they were sure of. He said, uh, we spoke no. with Mr. Uh, Martin, who was the head of the band up there. And, uh, isn't that a nice no. idea? Because people are standing in that line to get their cocoa and whatever, and there'll be music on the stage. So that, yeah. And Donald Trump will be handing out a sample <laughs> of wine yeah, and uh, vodka. Exactly. <laughs> it's, <laughs> please. Okay, anything else along those lines? Thank you, Mr. French, for your Thank help. Thank you, Commissioner Buckley, for the opportunity. All right, anytime. Anything else? John, would that? you like to discuss sure. the problem and what the problems we might have in the marketing? No, I'm just what, what's coming up. Okay. What going to do. I would assume you want to comment on the vote yesterday on the no, that races. <laughs> no, no. John K. Marketing Director for the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Um, just updating, uh, I get some calls from the chamber and some of the local businesses where we are with the marketing material. The, um, the trifold, which the um, real estate agents like a lot, and, and the, uh, the chamber does, uh, are in the press. 
and they I'm going to pick them up midweek of next week and I will distribute them as usual to all the real estate agents because what they do is they get the deposits in and they send back a receipt with that with that and it doesn't cost them anything to put it in because it, it weighs, weighs so light so we will have those we're having 140,000 of those printed up which I pick up a lot of them and distribute them here bring them to the chamber and then CTM will make uh, when you go to the galley hatch those racks there are CTM um, or White Mountain when you go up north or throughout New York State they have them up there uh, we ship them up to uh, North Country Distribution and we all send also send a, a bunch up with the chamber up to Canada to distribute them up there um, the bumper stickers are done ready to go we hold those back a little bit um, until the season gets going and then when the chamber office opens we give them all over there you and know when the chamber sure. office is opening do you have any idea i <laughs> geez, i would say mid-may glenn would you yeah i, I certainly by memorial day oh absolutely by but memorial I, day I, I you, say but that wouldn't yeah. be all week long it would just be in the week no just a week yeah just the weekends yeah they'll be they'll be opening up um on that the um Again, we're going to be doing the television ads and stuff like that. Um, my one concern uh, this year will be the Canadian dollar. It's taken a major hit against the U.S. dollar. It is approximately 30% below last year's number. Um, Commissioner Rage is not here to back me up on that, but he has told me he has got numerous cancellations because of the, the, the price hike. Um, so it will affect us, but we are just taking our dollars and uh, yeah. hitting our target markets, um, which is upper, you know, New York State, uh, through Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and we're going to go down the, the coast a little bit more down into Connecticut, and maybe into the um, the Pennsylvania area, because we do see those cars coming up. Yeah. Um, we all walk around. I walk every day, and I walk down the boulevard, and I. I look at every license plate, and you know that tells me they're coming. That tells me where they're reaching, um, and that's kind of just the eye in the sky type of thing. But we back that up through t two different forces, and that is with um, where the people come to our website. It breaks it down, you know where they are, what postal zone, what what town, what district they're in. So that gives us an idea. The other uh, way that we go about doing that is that we have uh, a large following on our Facebook page. That breaks it down to demographics, you know, with female, male, uh, age uh, uh, brackets and everything like that. That also breaks it down. And then the people that um, call in for the visitor's guide through the chamber, we get that all on an Excel spreadsheet. You manipulate the spreadsheet and tells you what state, what town they're coming for. So we look and see where, you know, how effective our dollars are. Or, you know, maybe target another market that's coming along. So. That's what we're doing, and that's what we're going to be doing for the year 2016 in order to you know, make sure that if the Canadians aren't coming down in the droves that they have been, and, and we love them, uh, because they're down here for a while. When they come down, they always spend the money. Uh, we're going to have to get more, uh, reach out more locally and, and try to get some more people in that way. But um, the real estate agents tell me the bookings are way up. So we're looking for a great year. I mean, today was, I looked out the window. I and know, it the was parking like parking lot was full. June. Of them. All the parking lots were yeah. full and it was great. So, Unbelievable. hopefully, um, you know, they didn't spend any money skiing this year. So, hopefully, yeah. we'll come to the beach. <laughs> the the yeah. Any questions? No, I just compliment you on shifting, being aware Canada may be off the table economically as a, a driver. Yeah. Knowing that in February and March allows you to fine-tune your market. Oh, absolutely. And, and it just, when we saw them coming down, we just threw money up there and they came in rows. But it is tough. 30% change oh, yeah. is tough. Very difficult. Yeah. I heard the last time it was 65 cents. Was yeah, I'm, I'm being positive Holy about it. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully it takes up a little bit. And, yeah. But, you know, some of those, you know, the Canadians will come. I mean, we, we, you know, the one thing about Hampton Beach is they got a vacation someplace. Yeah. And we are rated one of the best value resorts in the United States because of Glen French putting on all of his things, what we do with the sandcastles, the, the, the fireworks, all the entertainment, the children's week, everything you got. You know, just park your car and forget it and, 
enjoy and you don't have to take out your wallet unless you want to go see the big acts over at the casino. And while I mentioned the casino, uh, Fred is doing a great job. The uh, first show there is the 24th. It looks like the 25th, and he's got them up and running right after it. Okay. Last year, I was talking to Kara Sharkey. There was it's kind of how they travel in circles in the groups. This year, it's a good year. He's getting them in there. Um, the boardwalk's going to be open for the 24th, from what I'm hearing. And I've talked to Kevin at the Sea Catch, and he's going to be open April 1st. So we're good. starting to open the Excellent. doors early. So it'll be a great season. Wonderful. Thank you. One more thing that um, I wanted to discuss under new business that I'll let you explain because of your background in okay. speaking and wonderfulness is uh, that we took a trip up to the UNH <clears throat> and uh, discussed um, having a study done. Proceed. Right. We're talking with the professor in the <clears throat> business school at the University of New Hampshire and are commissioning him to do an economic impact study for the precinct. The motivation behind this is the precinct through events, which are paid for by the residents and businesses of the precincts, is generating an awful lot of economic activity on the beach and in the town of Hampton. So we've asked them to quantify it. So we can tell it, the money we are spending is producing. Traditionally, in a, what they look for is if you spend a dollar and I spend it with you, and then you spend 90 cents for the dollar I spent with you, there's a ripple effect, which makes the one dollar end up having an impact on ten, of the value of, say, $10 over time. It's this sort of thing. And kind of looped into this indirectly is right now, People are voting with their wallets to live here, to develop here. In the last week, on the Sun Valley side of the river, a house just came down because it's waterfront. Drive up Ocean Boulevard, and Bernie's is starting to change his property. The property on the next block to Bernie's has just come down. It's just unending. This is a grand time to be part of the beach. And the precinct plays a role in this. People do not invest in places that are called resorts unless they are resort filled. And really, almost all the entertainment produced on this beach comes through the precinct and other activities, obviously. So it's, it's, it's a great political structure to keep. End of my editorial. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just to let you know that your commissioners have been hard at work this winter. We have been looking into all sorts of activities, and Mr. French as well. We've been at all sorts of meetings trying to work, uh, extend the season somewhat. People have cried for that, so we're trying to do that in our own way. And uh, just to let you know. Um, any public comment? <clears throat> go right ahead. Mr. Renya. Uh, maybe just a little bit of news. Uh, I don't know if, you know, now that the Hampton Union only comes out on Friday, <laughs> uh, maybe some of the things that have, have occurred over the past couple of weeks may not be, uh, <clears throat> the people here at the, the, the village district may not be aware of. But uh, what has happened recently is, if you're aware of this, that they've discovered that from the Church Street pump station, out to the wastewater treatment plant, there's a serious problem. There are two pipelines that uh, extend through, underneath the marsh from that pump station out to the uh, wastewater treatment plant, and those pipelines move the effluent from the beach. Uh, I guess they, from what I understand, during the uh, winter months, one pipe is sufficient. But during the summer months, with the influx of tourists and uh, the influx of people coming to the beach, they have to keep those both of those pipes going. So they've discovered that there is a leak in one of them, and the selectmen have appropriated the sum of $180,000 to investigate and to repair as best as possible where that leakage is occurring. With a long-range plan of a, a $3.1 million appropriation or through a, a special town meeting 
and uh, deliberative session and public hearings to really tackle that problem and resolve it. But in the meantime, again, the, the <coughs> quick fix right now is for to at least find where that leak is occurring and to take care of it. Now, going along with that, uh, they expect to start that very shortly, and the selectmen have approved a request by the Department of Public Works to close off the resident parking lot and the leased parking lot that's adjoining the church and the resident-only parking lot right at the pump station for a staging area for the equipment and for the piping and so on. But they also, along with that, though, they have agreed that if you are a resident of the town and you have a resident-only parking sticker, that you will be allowed to park in any one of the municipal lots. So that's a plus. Uh, that lot is used extensively by people in the neighborhood and also people from town coming into town in to enjoy the beach. So at least uh, the selectmen, again, have agreed that while that staging area is being used by the, the uh, uh, whoever is going to take care of that piping, uh, the lots will be closed, but we will be able to park in any one of the municipal lots with the resident-only sticker on your vehicle. And that would be free of charge? Yes, free of charge, no charge. Which would yes. seem like, you know, a lot more than, than I do, that's for sure on that, which is great. Right. Um, do you have a time period of when that's going to start? Well, I tell you, they, they've started working over there, uh, uh, getting the lot ready, I guess, you know, to, I to start moving equipment in or moving piping. So I th th uh, hopefully they want to get that corrected, or at least the, you know, the Band-Aid end of it, done this spring before the season and then later on into the fall after the seafood festival to get involved in the the major portion because that takes again they'd have to have a, a possible special town meeting because there would be a bonding issue a deliberative session uh public hearings and so and then contracting i assume so I, that's the long-range plan but my understanding is that they're going to start and get <coughs> the preliminary work or this this phase of it done prior to the summer season so that both of those pipelines will be operational by the time the season opens up. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, closing comments, anyone? Minutes, minutes. Oh, oh, I'm skipping the minutes because Chuck isn't here. So oh, okay. we'll do the minutes. And thank you for reminding me. We'll do the minutes when he returns in April. And that's why I didn't do that. Thank you, though. Um, Closing comments we did? Anything? I would just say briefly, the reach out by the precinct to the Department of Recreation and to the Winter Hunt and High School shows that we are a community uh, and that there are resources within that community that are very beneficial to all of us and the cooperation that we have been getting in this reach out is fine at this time. I just want to remind everybody March 25th, please come, vote, and uh, stay for the meeting at 7 o'clock. Anything else? Okay. I will close this meeting at 6.03 p.m. Thank you very much, everybody.